Hey everybody, this is Pure Palmiati, and this is Independent Crossroads number three, uh, part uh, interview, part working hangout, chatting, uh, and on tonight's show we have Kevin Phillips. Yay! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I'm going to attempt to screen share right now some stuff. So I think I can click on that. Let's see if this works out. All right. Is infinity okay? What you should be seeing now, and Kevin, you can tell me if you see this, is a digital comic book arts group. Uh, alas, I see nothing but my manga studio window. That's mm -hmm. the only thing. I'm seeing. Yeah. Not even the little windows at the bottom. So. Uh, let's see. Uh, it should be. Oh wait, no, it was it was right. Um, it's a little delayed. So let me see. Oh wait, no, no, no. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a little delayed. But. Okay, sorry folks, you're seeing infinity. Okay, you should be seeing the Digital Comic Book Arts Group. It's a group uh, started by Kevin and Johannes Wick. Do um, you want to talk about the group a little? Well, um, I've been hanging around places <laughs> like the art casters, of course, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Lafferty and some guy named Peter Palmiotti. And... Uh, it, there just wasn't really a place for you know, not really comic books and certainly not people who were doing them digitally, you know, any aspect of uh, digital comics, whether it's just coloring or penciling and inking, the whole shebang. So jo Johannes and I got together, and uh, he really got it off the ground, and we made a Facebook page that's catering especially to digital Comic book artist, and it is called what? <laughs> Digital comic book arts, arts. That's what it is. Yeah. On Facebook. Yeah, I'm just I'm just scrolling through the group. So people can get, get a look at the uh, people that are members. Uh, yeah, it's just recently they started up. Just 28 members. You can. Asked to be invited to join. It's on Facebook. Digital Comic Book Arts. Uh, type that in, or I'll put the link in the show. And uh, go join if you're uh, you know doing comic books and you're a digital artist. Use Mega Studio, Photoshop. There's plenty of programs. Uh, yeah, lots of programs. Digitally. <laughs> we do not discuss. Uh, and then we're going to talk about. <laughs> the um, the Kickstarter that uh, you're doing, are you doing all the art for it? Um, it, what I did really was a lot of uh, pieces, enough to put together to make the little uh, video that he has on the Quick Start page. So I've okay. done like three pages that are completely finished, except for dialogue, and then I've laid out the entire first chapter, which I think is about 20 pages. And right. I've also done this uh, um, big poster that's uh, on the site. Strangely, we haven't really done a cover yet. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> so uh, what you should be seeing is the Kickstarter page, uh, Saga of Mong. Again, I'll put the link in the, in the description box below. Yes. I'll check it out. Um, shooting for 10,000, they got 32 days left. Um, so it's a long way to go, but uh, you know, can happen, I, I, folks. <laughs> I should say something uh, about the creator real quickly. He's uh, Jeremy Ennis. He has several uh, shorts to his credit, which can be seen on uh, uh, that that page. That uh, Peter has up. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he, he has a heck of a script. It was so a really is, good this script. Is, this is about more on his on the Kickstarter page and there's 
his website and his Twitter. I clicked on his website, which is loading up. Um, this is the first project he's collect, uh, started on Kickstarter. And this may take a minute. But uh, yeah, here's his uh, website writer, dark editor, motion graphics artist, technology enthusiast. Um, he's got LinkedIn, IMDb, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Vimeo. Um, screenplays, demo trailers, short films. You could all go, go there and check them out. And he's based in Louisiana, which is just a stone's throw for me in Texas. Yeah, I, I remember uh, I had a friend in Louisiana, and I always got confused because it said L.A. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. I wonder if there is a Los Angeles. Louisiana. But okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing and get some work done while we chat. Um, so it should be, let's see, that button I should go back to my webcam. There we go. Um, and I'm going to click on you, and you can show off some, some stuff. You got your Manga Studio up? Yes. With the cover art or a promotional piece? All right. You're seeing that? Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, I, I'm not seeing any little windows at the bottom, but you're in control. I trust you completely. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good on you, so entirely uh, your show now. Um, okay. Want to talk more about the project, of course, and your involvement? Okay. Um, uh, what you should be seeing here is a... Uh, story layout that shows multiple pages. I guess I can show you a couple that I inked. Uh, let's see. He had first originally talked to me about you know being the penciler and inker and colorist and letterer. <laughs> and uh, I don't uh, think um, that the coloring part is going to be able to work out. So hopefully when we get um, going, we do have some uh, good people on tap to uh, do the coloring. That's a lot of work to do everything. <laughs> well, you can see from this screen, uh, if you, there's just a ton of stuff here. Yeah. And these are some of the, uh, I don't think he showed this one. These are more character designs that these people will be showing up in, I think, later episodes. So He's making this comic book, which will be in chapters, but he's also planning to make a web series out of it, a live-action web series. And in fact, if you go to his uh, uh, homepage, you'll see links to several short uh, films that he's done. And uh, the last one is pretty similar in tone to, I think, what he has planned for this, which is really neat. It's going to be really neat. It's a lot of comedy, and it's uh, a lot of over-the-top horror. It seems like a really good uh, script that he's got. Yeah, there's more character sketches and it's it's actually like you're taking the likenesses from the actors no in fact I didn't know who the actors were first I wish I had but uh, no okay. these are all just made up uh, interesting I guess there would still be time for me to do that but <laughs> <laughs> make more work for myself yes I, I guess I'll show you uh, one of the color ones. 
I'm using I'm using Manga Studio for all of this, except when I would go to lettering, I would probably use Illustrator. Because yeah, doing lettering in Manga Studio isn't the easiest. It doesn't always work in your favor. No, like it doesn't have a word wrap, and it doesn't. That's the main thing. Like if you try yeah. to import type to a cursor mark is just one long line of type, and then you have to go and figure where you want the breaks to fall. So, not the best That's for that now. There's no cut and paste. <laughs> Yeah, it looks really good. And uh, I think that's about it. There may be... Uh, here's one of a guy throwing up. You want to see that? <laughs> 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 That'll top off the night. <laughs> I just ate. <laughs> Whoops. I may be showing a little too much here. Jerry probably wouldn't want me to show them all. So that's about <clears throat> that's about it, Peter. But cool. I mean, you know. So uh, if you want to pledge to this product, yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll put the uh, links. Yes, in the please. Thanks. Box of the video. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, definitely go check it out and go check out uh, his website to uh, see some of his work uh, that I'm sure will convince you to pledge. I have. So you want to talk about... Um, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I, I was just going to say, like... Um, like your your background as an artist working in a field, um, like how did you start out? Well, I, I'm definitely a, getting into a, art, getting into comics. I'm definitely a Johnny come lately to the comics, but in the '90s, I think it was. Do you remember when Kumiko was out? Wasn't that the early '90s? Kumiko uh, and Pacific, not Pacific, but. Kamiko and somebody else. It might have been Pacific, early nineties, or for first comics. Oh yeah, maybe. yeah, you're right. It might have been. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, back then I had a friend. Uh, I met him in Houston, and then he moved ac actually to New York and worked for a time at DC Comics. And uh, yeah, Keith S. Wilson. And he let me do some backgrounds for him, and I actually got credit <laughs> <laughs> on one DC comic book as having done the background. So, but uh, <laughs> oh, <really>? we, yeah, <laughs> and um, at Kamiko, I was doing mostly um, the Elementals by Bill Willingham, who was the writer. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the artist, but. Keith and I inked that, and that went on for several oh, okay. issues. And they also had the uh, Robotech franchise, which again Keith inked and I background inked some of the uh, some of the robots back in the good old days before pitographs and triangles. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm still there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I I remember that stuff and people, you know. Uh, I'm a little older um, than most people I, <laughs> in my not circles. Me. But not uh, me. I, I think a lot of people, uh, not you, but um, but I think a lot of people would remember those books. Uh, yeah. You know, I I didn't re read um, Elementals, but I like I pick up a couple issues and I really like the art. It was a really um, good book, actually, very well written. I think it was, a, you know, it's an independent book. It's hard to find every issue, especially yeah. back then. Um, oh, and there's one other thing. I'm sorry that I should have mentioned. Um, 
I think in the very late 80s, I did uh, two comics for the Grand Canyon Association. These were what you might call edutainment comics. They uh -huh. had s superheroes, but they also wanted to teach the kids such and such. So That's funny. Um, my brother Jimmy was just uh, at Grand Canyon with uh, Amanda. Amanda oh, cool. Connor. So, um, they, yeah, they were posting pictures on Facebook, and it's like, wow, I wish I was there. Um, <laughs> They're probably still selling the magazines I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be funny. That's cool. Uh -huh. And uh, locally, locally and here in Houston, I've done comic book-like jobs all through my career because people know what I did. And I and I I, bet, I think probably the biggest thing I did was um, storyboards over the years. So you know there's a good re correlation between storyboards and comics. Yeah. Did you do storyboards for for what for? Well, uh, these would have been like magazine ads or uh, posters, that kind of thing, that had oh, a comic. Okay. They had a comic book flavor to them. Right, right. So your your career is made up of mostly like that kind of storyboards or advertising art, or what do you do mostly? Um, what I did mostly was uh, color storyboards, but they weren't what you would call working storyboards, like you see a Star Wars movie laid out probably in black pencil. These were very tight uh, marker color illustrations to sell the client rather than uh, help the director. <laughs> they were to right. sell the client on the idea of the commercial. So. I get that. Hmm. I'm sure that pays better than the comments. <laughs> yeah. Although in Houston, it has really dried up. There's very little work here anymore. <coughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a changing field. Well, of course, I'm in Houston, and the big oil companies, they moved either their regional shops up to Dallas, and sometimes Austin, and their big national branch was always in L.A. or in New York to begin with. So, And I think they brought a lot of people in-house as well. Right. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> what keeps you busy nowadays? Um, well, I'm waiting on this, of course. If it comes through, I'm going to be <laughs> incredibly busy. But mm -hmm. I'm also working on pencils and inks for an 80-page, I guess, graphic novella. And uh, I'm plugging along on that. Mm, cool. Very grateful for that. <clears throat> so it's another uh, work for hire situation, or is that? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. It's good to keep busy. By the <laughs> way, uh, something kind of interesting: the uh, saga of Mong that we're looking at. Uh, it was given to me as a a um, teleplay you know, as a, a film script. And so uh, it wasn't broken down into pages. <laughs> so that was an added uh, <laughs> uh, point of interest. I had to go through it and try to break it all down to make it make sense. Yeah, that could be a challenge. A little bit, a <laughs> little bit. Yeah. And uh, your Kickstarter is starting back up again now? Yeah, it's, um, you know, <clears throat> I mean, what I'm, what I'm working right right now on is Inwell's clothing, but it's it's the same penciler. It's Barry McLean. Oh. Um, we had, the original Kickstarter was something like 5,600 as the goal, and 
we had six days left, and I think we were at halfway point, something like that, and we project head John um, just didn't think we were going to make it. You know, we were trending like you know we would have got another thousand maybe, uh, just wouldn't have even come close. Uh, so he decided to change things up a little bit. Like originally he was going to do a big print run, uh, but now he's just going to do uh, print on demand. Uh, I think is one of the changes that will help make it a lot less of a goal, you know, a small goal. So we re relaunched it, um, and I think we're on, on day two, and we're already halfway to our oh, goal. Oh, wow, that's great. Well, I've seen the pages. Yeah, I exactly. think it looks great, man. Thanks. Um, it's definitely, uh, you know, I, I did, uh, what is it, uh, six, almost seven pages I inked so far in, in the cover. You know, we have covers done by us and one done, done by uh, another art team. Uh, it's an alternate cover. Hmm. Um but yeah, it's it's doing really well, and, and we want to keep up the pace. We actually uh, were or are uh, like within the top twenty most popular comic uh, Kickstarter campaigns right now. Oh, that's uh, great! Yeah, which is cool. Um, you know, it's it's a unique experience to be part of a Kickstarter. Uh, you know, eventually I, I, I'm going to be running one of my own. Um, it's an experience, and it's work, and it's, you know, sharing with all your friends and letting people know. I sent out emails and, and just talk to people. Uh, always talk about it in my videos and whatnot. Um, so, you know, it's... <laughs> I can't wait till it's done. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I, I didn't want it to relaunch because now it's more days. You know, it would have been done next week, but then it's going to be done the week after that, I guess. Uh, but, you know, I, I think most of the hard work is, is behind us. Um, as long as we uh, just reach out, you know, I'll just post on Facebook and G Plus and mentioned in my videos. Uh, I think I think we'll we'll definitely make it this time and I, we don't have to stress <laughs> uh, too, yeah. too much. So uh, but yeah I mean you know it's overall it's gonna be a, a mini series. Um, oh really? Yeah I think it might be like five issues. Oh okay. Um, so it's it's not an ongoing series but um, we uh, will be doing more Kickstarters for the upcoming. Um, there's plenty of people that do that, like Kickstarters for single issues. So we ho hope that works in our favor. And, you know, we, we'll get the first issue out and people will be able to actually have it in their hand and take a look at it or get the digital copy and check it out. And that will improve our chances with you know, upcoming Kickstarters and whatnot. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, and it's more work for you. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's one of my gigs and this is another one. This is, this is only five pages and I'm just about halfway done with this. Uh, then I got a 10 page, essentially quarterly book that I'm going to be working on with a different artist, Kenny Calderon. Oh. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking into uh, getting something much bigger. Um, there is another thing I'll be working on with Barry, which is a five-issue miniseries, but details are still yet to come. But that's with the, the writer of this, this guy, Ryan Stroop. I think you pronounce his last name as. Yeah, um, yeah. And that will be something possibly very controversial. We'll see. 
more to uh, come. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but you know, keep keep them busy, for sure. Yeah, that that that's uh, great, man. Yeah. Yeah. Between uh, the you mentioned like the R casters and and the one hundreds. Uh, I think we're going to do another D100s hangout where we get together a bunch of those that have done their 100-day challenge or, or are currently doing them. Mm-hmm. So that would be a, a lots of fun. Uh, that would be hosted by Scott Zirklin, who's an amazing artist. Oh, yeah. He's working his own comic right now. I think I just turned my mic off. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And for some reason, if you click um, the right headphone, the mic goes out. <laughs> Are you going to Indie Planet? Is is that what you? Is that where John is thinking of selling it, or Comicsology, or? Um. Well, plan on demand. There's more than one service. Uh, I'm actually not sure what he's going with, but it, it could be Kablam. It could be. Um, uh, but I, I guess we'll, we'll we'll see. You know. Yeah. I'm sure, it'll be quality. <laughs> so if you you know if you pledge to the Kickstarter and and order the comic, you. will you know, like the printed comic, you'll get a copy and uh, find out <laughs> what service we're using. <laughs> well, they do. They do a good job. Um, Kabul. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they and Indie Planet are, you know, part of the same shop, I guess. Or, yeah. They have some kind of close relationship. But. And they started um, selling um, digital now, too. Did you know that? I uh, did. I, I don't know if I looked at them lately. Um, like, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in having things printed myself. Yeah, but sure. also like the the digital option, and uh, I did hear that they were they had somewhere on, online. But of course, you know, once once I have product ready, I'll be going there. Checking out. For sure. There's also a website called uh, Drive Through Comics. They seem yep. to have a lot of interesting material there. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's funny. Like um, a lot of people that you know have their comics digital, like they don't just go through one thing. More cases than not, they're they're going through Kablam, they're going through Drive. There's other names I'm forgetting at the moment. Um, but they have like multiple options, and I, I don't know if that benefits them to have th- like the same thing in on different websites. Like I guess if you're a Kablam, mostly a Kablam customer, yeah, you you would go to them and order from them because you're already you know on the site and it's just easier. So maybe having the multiple options benefits them. Yeah. I think that the um, you know the pages I've seen you working on uh, for the end of days. I think they're looking really great. Um, thanks. Uh, um, yeah, like the first five and uh, the cover uh, up on my DeviantArt account for anybody interested in. Oh, okay. 
checking them out um, where you could see them pretty big. Oh yeah, definitely. I'll go there now. Stick your face up into to the glass and check out the the lines. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it usually takes me, like, working with a new penciler, um, you know, inking a comic is something I haven't really done in, in a, a while, uh, but it usually takes me a while to adapt, with, you know, to what the pencil is putting down and, and really key into what they're doing, and, and there's going to be some development uh, with you know, with me working over various pencils, um, sure. But I'm already comfortable. You know, I want to fine tune what I'm exactly what I'm putting out. You know, putting out there. But mm -hmm. um, he's really just. It's really fun to be working on his pages, and and I, I love his style, and uh, I think you know we mesh really well. Uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to find a good team, you know. Yeah. How do you feel, <clears throat> how do you feel about, like, doing, you know, your own work, like just working pencils and inks and, you know, being responsible for all that? <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you mean as, as, not as a creator, but just to... More, just um, doing the work. I think I like the penciling and inking best, and at that point, I'm not <laughs> uh, too reluctant to turn it over to the colorist. Uh, I, I got to admit to you, my coloring is not my strong suit. Well, you colored those pieces you were showing before, or you know, like the piece you're showing now is that your coloring? Yeah, yeah, that's mine. Yeah, I, I think it's good. But and, you know, I'm, I want to be able to color, so uh, I know it's it's challenging. Yeah. But uh, I like what I've seen so far. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So does it take you uh, like longer to color than anything else? Yeah, I mean that's part of the problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I worked out, and this is probably a little optimistic, but I worked out that it would take me about five hours to do each one. And obviously it depends on what the page is like, but five hours to pencil, five hours to ink, five hours to color. And I actually do kind of enjoy uh, doing the lettering because I like, you know, placing balloons and things where they work the best. Right, and also they don't cover up a lot of the juicy details. Or they do. <laughs> <laughs> Her head is terrible. Yeah. Well, cover half of it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure like what an average colorist takes on a page. I know like... Um, for end of days when when I get the high res scan out to the colorist, it's not too long after. It's like here's the flats, and then a little later it's like here's the, the finished page. <laughs> it's like, and you never see what goes on in between. Huh? Okay, <laughs> actually get more, more pages. Yeah. Mm. It's like I feel I feel like I'm the slowest one on the on the crew, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking that I could do the lettering on a page in an hour, but that's probably uh, optimistic too. So. Mm. so, do you when you letter? Do you, are you doing a lot of fancy stuff like different fonts or, or effects? No, or I, yeah, I've actually color? got I've actually got from Comic Craft. I got the uh, joke. Kubert font, which I really like, and that handles most of it. But then, and I do all of this in Illustrator again because of the features that Illustrator has for type, which are so much better. 
Right. But I like to make my own balloons and <laughs> that kind of thing. So. There you go. I tell you the one thing I haven't figured out how to do is thought balloons. Uh, an illustrator without actually lettering each, I mean, um, drawing each balloon separately. <laughs> if it's a uh, regular speaking balloon, you can, you know, resize it and, and that'll work usually. But uh, thought balloons would mm. be tough. Well, you know, I did res mess around a little with Manga Studio uh, I have a lot to learn, but I I did say that they had a pretty good Thorpe balloon configuration. If you just need the the balloons themselves, maybe you put them on and then go into Illustrator and do the letters after or something. Yeah, if, 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 if they take <laughs> if, if if they transfer, that's kind of a problem too. Uh, I, well, I, yeah, true. In Illustrator, my workflow is to save it out as a um, at a resolution that matches what I'm doing. And I save it as right. a PNG file with transparency. So I fill the balloons with white, and then every the area around them is all transparent. So it's pretty easy to put into place. Right. I'm talking techno babble. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just crept on paper. I don't know anything. <laughs> I'm a geek who's bad at math. So that <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we got two viewers. Let's see. No, no comments, but some people are watching. <laughs> Hello, people. Hello, people. <laughs> I appreciate you watching. We sure do. Um, yeah, it really did. Promote. I, I just been my schedule been pretty tight. <laughs> so. So are you? Do this. Um, okay. Are you? Are so? Are you younger than Jerry? Uh, not Jerry. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Jeff. No, no, your brother, your brother. I'm sorry, oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, you know, Jimmy. Jimmy. Are you younger than Jimmy? Or? Jimmy, yeah, yeah, but it's like a year and a half. Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, you know, he. <clears throat> if anyone who still doesn't know, um, he's been in the comic industry. A hell of a lot longer, although, you know, interviews I've seen him say pretty much when I started, but, um, you know, he was, he was doing, com working on comics, uh, maybe not getting full credit, but working on comics when he was in college. Um, wow. Wow. And, uh, you know, I, I had a day job for like 10 years. I was, you know, worked. Working as a messenger and then working in mailrooms and eventually was running a mailroom. Um, because, you know, I thought art is art and comics are too important to me. I'm not going to do this for a living. It, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. Um, I mean, I, I've told the story before, but essentially, <clears throat> um, Jimmy was actually helping out uh, this guy, Mark. Textiera. Oh yeah. Um, when he was working on Ghost Rider, and uh, you know, I guess Jimmy Jimmy was inking backgrounds or whatever. And Mark was uh, always doing the book last minute. We love you, Mark. Um, <laughs> and uh, so one one night, uh, my brother was like, "Hey, you want to make a couple books?" Uh, you know, helping out Mark. Uh, get the book in on time and, and you could fill in some blacks and I was like, okay, sure. Um, and, but they were doing it up in the mall offices after, huh. after work hours. So, you know, I, I was a big mall fan growing up and I've never been to the offices 
Um, and here we were, you know, just past five o'clock. Um, and, you know, it, it was, I don't know why, but it was empty that night. There was no, nobody else there but us. Hmm. Um, and uh, it was me, Mark, Jimmy, uh, this guy Ken, and maybe one other guy. And I was, you know, I just had a stack of pages before me to fill in blacks. Um, and we all, we're all at, like, our tables in the bullpen. Wow. And I was looking around and saw all the offices for the editors, and they had posters on the wall, and just a bee in, in the bullpen. I, you know, I, I always used to read the, uh, you know, Stan Soapbox, and, and it was, like, mobile bullpen page in, in the comics. Um, yeah. And it was just, like, this is like a dream I never thought would happen, you know. Um, and it it took me basically ten minutes of being there uh, to decide that I wanted to do comics for a living. That is neat. That is neat. Being yeah. Right. Did Did you do yes. art in high school or? Yeah, I you know it's like I I drawn all my life, but you know. In, um, I, I guess, you know, it's like I had a teacher who recommended that possibly I go to a, an article for, for high school, you know, oh, uh -huh. they sort of had some talent and, um, you know, uh, recommended that. And so, you know, I, I knew that, you know, my brother already went to art, art design, you know, he was there and... Um, I figure, you know, I looked into the school myself and was like, oh, this looks like fun, and, and you had to do a portfolio uh, test, um, you know, how to put together a portfolio, and then on top of that, like, do a sort of test to get into the school. And, wow. Um, they like my like my portfolio and I guess I passed whatever the time was. Uh, and I saw, I saw some of the other portfolios that they kids put together and there was like drawings on, on yellow paper with lines. And it was like, <laughs> really? Is that what you're doing? Is that what oh, I'm no. competing against? <laughs> like there's some, some kids are just clueless. I'm sure Thank they didn't you, get Lord. in, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, even though I was into comics and art all my life, I didn't take it seriously until I decided to do it for a living. Then I took it really seriously. Hmm. You know, and I, I thought pretty much, like, I thought my skills were... were crap, you know, in the beginning, and and I just tried to get job after job, and on the side of that, I was training myself to be better, um, you know, specifically for inking. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I worked really, really hard for it, and, you know, it was one of those kind of things, like, you know, even though there was sort of a, a, a small part of me that was a natural skill towards art, um, a lot of the uh, professionalism didn't come until, you know, I developed over time uh, of just training really hard, working seven days a week at it, you know, either on the job training through independent comics or, uh, you know, I, I was still assisting inkers, you know, my brother and, and some other people. Uh, there was another way for me to make money doing it. Um, and eventually, you know, I got I got a gig at uh, Acclaim. Um, Acclaim. Uh, what am I thinking? Um, Valiant Comics. I'm sorry, what was that? Bob Layton. Valiant Comics, they put out uh, Solar, they put oh, out okay. Okay. Uh, Archer Armstrong, 
Exo Man of War, Ninjak. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, that was that was. I'm gonna say '94 thereabouts. I worked there probably under a year um, as a background anchor. If you if you pick up any of those issues around that time, my my name was pretty much on you know at least in the back of every book because they they gave credit to everybody that oh. worked in the office. Uh, <laughs> Better than I did, so <laughs> that's great. Yeah. But uh, you know I, I talk about all this stuff and. Everybody doesn't know my early days, then you're not listening to my stuff. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, you know, I just I just love comics and and the community, uh, artists and writers, and uh, conventions and and comic stores and you know pretty much everything about it. You know, there's, there's a lot of Quirky and weird people, but uh, it's all fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we're artists. We're supposed to be weird and quirky. Yeah. 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 I, growing up, I never really considered anything else because I was never any good at anything else. So I knew it would be art of some sort, and uh, fortunately, things worked out pretty well. But I have also worked. Uh, you know, as a paste-up artist, uh, long before uh, computers, and after them too, for that matter. But uh, I've done everything like art studio type stuff for agencies, and advertising agencies. But the comics—that's so that's a lot of fun. In, in the agencies, I worked at a studio that yeah. served that served the agencies. And uh, actually, uh, that was when the computer started to really take off, and uh, it pretty much put them out of business. Because so, they were, when I was working for them, I was doing, you know, some production, but I was also doing a lot of storyboards. But uh, when the computer came along, they started using, you know, clip art or uh, eye stock photos and. And of course, the production was brought in house and done on computer right there. So, yeah, you know, like even though Jimmy uh, was working on comics, he had a full time day job for many years. Oh wow, really? Years, and he was still retouching. So, um, that you know, I, I think that. That benefited him greatly because, you know, even though he's just writing right now, uh, which is 99.9% .9 of what he does, uh -huh. um, he was an anchor at one time. And oh, yeah, that's how I knew the name. Yeah, and, and he was really, really fast. I'm, I'm, I'm the opposite. But, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, he got that. I know he got that from, from working you know, doing photo retouching and working in that, you know, the environment that pretty much, you know, he, he had job after job after job working in an office with a bunch of other photo retouches and just had that incredible sort of discipline environment. Hmm. Now, was this computer, know. was this computer <laughs> retouching? This is, yeah, free computer. All by hand, you know, like whether oh, they wow. use water, watercoloring or acrylics or whatever. I don't know. Huh. Um, you know, I actually did um, a little bit myself, like when when I was just before I left New York, I had a, a day job for a little bit working at a um, it's a photographer store. Kind of place, yeah. and they did they did uh, graduation pictures for a lot of the schools. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And I was I was doing you know photo retouching by hand uh, myself there, um, but it was it was almost essentially uh, like 
all the, the photos would get specs on them, so you're just pretty much filling in specs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, uh -huh. And uh, it, it was it was a little challenging in the beginning, but it was it was kind of an easy gig. Um, although you know, I wish like they were more successful because pretty much you know the the only reason I didn't stay there is they they had lots of challenges with money and paying people and <laughs> one of those places, but. Uh, I let you know this. The owner had a son who worked there, and the guy was a real riot. Um, and he was totally fun to work with. He was a real character. Um, but otherwise, I had to leave. <laughs> I was like, "Dude, you're not paying me on time." It's like it's two weeks later, pay me already. <laughs> oh yeah, that's not good. It is funny yeah. you mentioned. Yeah. You had a job. My, my parents used to be portrait photographers, and uh, my father would take oh, yeah. uh, would take the portrait, but uh, my mother would be retouching a lot of negatives. And I remember when the business closed, she went somewhere else and touched that person's photos. But one ch thing she did for their own business was that she would. You know, this was before color photography, or before it was economical. So what she would do is uh, use oil paints and hand color uh, these black and white photographs ah, okay. of these of these people's portraits. It was just amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, she had a, like a little light table that she would retouch negatives on. So it's uh, I'm sure it's difficult work. I thought once again I thought it was fun. Hmm. You know, I didn't, when I first got there, I didn't understand the concept of what they were doing. I was like, "What?" <laughs> but so you were working on prints, not on negatives. Yeah, I was. I was working on the prints. Hmm. Um, so it's pretty much what they gave people. It's like here, here's you know, 20 pictures of, of your kid, mm -hmm. and each one I had to sort of fill in the dots. <laughs> so well, yeah, that's what she used to do, but she did it on, on the negatives. Of course, we were making our own prints, so maybe that makes a difference too. Yeah. We also had things called proofs. They were like uh, brown colored proofs right. made from the negatives. And these were things we would show to the client before we gave them the actual final piece. And we used to live in the top of a two-story building or a house. And in the backyard where was a stairway that went from the top to the ground. And so every inch of space on those steps, <laughs> there was a proof because they had to be out in the sun to develop for a certain amount of time. So That's cool. <laughs> that was quite a quite a time. And also in the house we had um, a dark room. And we'd have all these, you know, chemicals in the bathtub. <laughs> I think we laid a board across the bathtub. Um, this was not where we lived, of course. This was a, a unit below, but it was a big board with all the uh, three developing trays for black and white photography back then. So, right, bunch, bunch of work, hard to make money even then. So. Mm. Yeah. I took a little photography in, in this was uh, in high school, and it was yeah the days when everything was chemicals and and uh, I I liked it you know I didn't know exactly what I was doing, but as long you know I'm really good at following instructions, so you know I think I excelled in the class, but I couldn't tell you 
what to use or how the system worked. But I knew, you know, I it was just a breeze at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was, you know, kids with digital photography now. It's like, yeah, take a picture of them. Yeah, take it in the Photoshop. Yeah, yeah. I just put a filter on it. Yeah, it looks <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, how long did you work in comics from '91 to? '91 to today. I mean, you know, it's um, you know, either comics or just. Art of kind, or you know, I've been basically freelance all this time. Occasionally, I had daytime jobs. I, you know, I had like since from '91 to '99, I had one apartment. Um, but afterwards, between '99 to today, I moved around a ton. Oh. Um, a lot when I was in New York. You know, I, I pretty much live in every borough of New York, <laughs> as well as oh, wow. on, you know, in Manhattan as well. Um, and then, I, you know, uh, once I passed away, uh, I decided to take an adventure and, and sort of move to Kentucky. Um, That's a pretty big switch. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's, it has everything to do with what I'm doing for a living, and, you know, it's never made a ton of money. You know, my best years were when I was working for Mall in D.C., definitely money-wise, um, not accounting for inflation or whatever, but, uh, you know, it's, it's just... I wanted it someplace cheaper, and also, you know, just a change of pace. You know, it's like, I love New York, um, but, I, you know, I used to go upstate every summer, sort of country as opposed to the city. So I thought, I thought Kentucky would be, you know, good, and, um, you know, as, as things are going now, now we're looking for a house. We found something, but, you know... Uh, We'll see if it uh, it's not sold by the time we're ready to get it. But um, you know, we're seriously looking into something that's a lot more country than where we are now. Hmm. And I don't I don't mind it at all. You know, as long as I can, we're not too far away from an airport. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> and a toilet. I can go to any yeah yeah a working toilet. Uh, I can go to any comic convention or, or you know and get out of town and go visit other places and, and that True. sort of thing. True. When did the work for Marvel and DC stop? Uh, well, um, or you know, trail a- off. after <clears throat> shortly after um, Valiant, you know. Uh, I was doing, you know, I, I started doing independent work, like independent comics in 91. Still did them, even though, like, Valiant was my day job. <clears throat> and um, I believe I was I was working on Razor uh, when I sort of got a call from Cal Fury. Cal Fury, who I sort of befriended when I was working at Valiant, um... And he was like, you know, we're, I'm doing a couple of filling issues of Aquaman, and, uh, you know, the regular anchor is busy. Uh, I thought of you. I want to do some tryouts, and I sort of got the gig. And you know, we, we were doing filling issues here and there until we became the regular team. Uh, so that that was pretty regular for you know. Three years, and then I work, went to work for Marvel, uh, and I was there for, for, I guess, four years, give or take. Um, and then it sort of dried up after that. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's like 
in all the time that I was at Marvel, many things changed, uh, and a lot of the editors I was connected with initially weren't there anymore. So the editors yeah. who had given me work were um, the connections I, I, you know, made good friendships with. Just you know, they went on lots of different things. That's the thing with editors; they move around a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, I, I got a. I remember getting like an All Marines mini series because they were doing a video game, and that's when Acclaim bought Valiant. Um, and it, so it was a comic book mini series tied in with video game. Um, I and, didn't know Acclaim owned did, Valiant. Is that yeah, still true? Yeah, it went through many changes. Huh. No, it's it's completely uh, different owner publisher. You know. It's, okay. Okay. It's it's called the claim, but uh, only the characters are the same at this point. <laughs> okay. It's, you know, it's run effectively nowadays, which is good. Um. <clears throat> but yeah, I've been I've been just doing a lot of random comics for different people. Um, Lots of, lots of my friends I worked with, uh, people I met online, you know, just wherever I can get work, keep busy. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I try occasionally to get, you know, work through bigger, big, like the bigger independent publishers. Um, Dark Horse? More often than not, it would be, yeah, Dark Horse or... Um, Ape or IDW. IDW, on. yeah, that's what I was thinking. Of. Um, but uh, mostly it was with people I knew, people I was friends with. Um, you know, somehow those are just stronger connections, and I'd rather work with people I knew. <laughs> yeah. A few months ago, I almost uh, I got this job inking <laughs> digitally, uh, but it fell through. So that's something I'd kind of like to do too. Is you know work on somebody else's Pencils. stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I know like rates aren't what they used to be, but. Uh, You know, if you get in with a good publisher, I imagine they're better. And that's why, I, I mean, I almost gave up thinking entirely at one point, and it wasn't too long ago I made a video about it. Um, hmm. You know, it's like just, just a, you know, the rates aren't, like, you know, anywhere near what they used to be. And I'm trying to make an art, a living as an artist. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's really challenging to work in comics and do that alone. So, you know, I mean, I've sort of been branching out a lot more in the last few years than I've done the entire rest of my career. Uh, just doing other stuff, trying to sell artwork online and eBay and, uh, yeah. Being busy elsewise. Yeah, on a, on a good job, I could probably make, you know, a good ad job, probably make four times as much. But at this point yeah. in, in my life, if I can, you know, make enough to get along, and then that's what I'm hoping for. And it's something I can just keep doing, you know. Right. Yeah. Hopefully. So, are you are you seeking out like that kind of thing? Like you just said, uh, you know, like getting a inking yeah, I, gig, digital inking gig. I have one big source, uh, uh, freelanced. dot com. Okay. Right. And they have. Um, 
sometimes uh, post, you know, comic book work. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of it is just so low paying that uh, you know I'm not going to work for fifty cents an hour. <laughs> Well, there's um, there's DeviantArt. I don't know if you're on there. Um, I'm barely they on have listings. <laughs> now, Oh, they do. They do have listings. Occasionally, uh, you see something decent. Um, yeah, they, they have the forum, and in the forum, they have uh, either collaborations or paying work. Of course, you want to look under paying work. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I I really find well, I, I probably never found anything there that was uh, decent paying and traditional inking, uh, but they probably have a lot of digital inking there. Uh, but the better source is digital webbing. Yes. Yeah. I don't spend enough time and on there. I need to. They I have need to. Paying work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you go if you go there like you know in a couple of times a week just to check up on what what's listed, um, it's all about timing because you know you miss it and a thousand other people see it and yeah, the job yeah. is gone. Right. <laughs> but it's it's worth taking a look over there. Well, and, the, you know, the I mean, not for nothing, you do really nice work. So. Oh, thank you. I, I, um, yeah, on the on the website I was talking about, if you if you don't get it uh, soon enough, uh, you know, you go there and they you see the that the job poster has had uh, 140 <laughs> responses. <laughs> By then he's just I can just imagine he's crazy and beside himself looking at all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, is you know, I mean, anything art related, you know, or entertainment. I mean, you know, there's, there's plenty of competition out there, and yep. if you're not on top of it, then you're gonna miss it. So, so especially the good gigs. Yeah. Any anything, any time I see something that pays decently. And you're exactly right. There's, there's already a hundred people who responded, <laughs> and the job is already somebody got it already. So, well, they send me email links, and even that is a crapshoot because, you know, sometimes thirty people have already applied, which is not bad, or a hundred and thirty people, and you know pretty well there's not much, not much sense in going after the big one. I mean. The, the one that has already gotten so much response. Yeah. And there's, and there's I do that. Like, I'll, go ahead. I'll message somebody, like, even though if the job was taken, you know, it's like, here, here's my work. If you, you know, have something coming up, let me know. You know, I, I think I got one or two things from doing that. Yeah, that, that that's good. I have a website, but uh, I also have a portfolio on this uh, on this place that I go to. And. You know, my regular website has all kinds of things on it. Um, a little bit of comics, but mostly, um, you know, ad art, cartoons, or storyboards, that kind of thing. So. Do you want to tell uh, people your website? I'm sorry? You want to tell people your website? Oh, uh, I guess <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed. It's so, it's so creaky. <laughs> but uh, Kevin Phillips Illustration dot com. Okay. Yeah, 
you don't have to tell them. <laughs> well, no. I, mean, I don't think I put anything in there in like five years, and it was probably five years before that that I did yeah. the other last time. So. No, that's, that's a lot of creators I know. It's, it's Peter, do you, have your, do you have your <laughs> own website, or are you posting I, on DeviantArt? If I post art, I, I post it on DeviantArt mostly. Okay. Um, I, I throw up links all the time on Facebook and Twitter and G+. Um, but I consider DeviantArt my main hub of where you can see the pages that I've worked on and whatnot. I um, need to go there. I need to go there. Yeah. I, I do have a URL. I think it's um, humanartstudio.net. Um, might be .com, but uh, I have yet to put it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's on my list. Um, yeah, right now I got enough work, but it's it. You know, it's good to have a a, a nice online presence set up so that uh, people can like find your stuff without asking or you. Know, you know, it's like I do link, a lot of links, um, like on my YouTube page. You can put almost all your links there nowadays. So I do have a lot of links there, uh, but it'd be nice to have my website up. I still have my much uh, delayed YouTube I want to do on uh, on Manga Studio Five, but. I think it's been like a year since I <laughs> did my last video. Uh -oh. uh, well, you want to get that up before Manga Studio 6 comes out. Exactly. No kidding. It probably will. <laughs> it's hard to see how they could do much to it, except maybe improve the lettering. Boy, if they could do that. Yeah, yeah that, would, that would be uh, what they pr probably should focus on. You think, you know, it's, it's a program for making comics. You think it would be better. But, well, it's um, made in Japan. I don't know if you knew that. But, so, yeah, I, I know. Yeah. Uh, I guess they're just not thinking in terms of Western type. Because mm. you don't have many uh, options at all. No. But like you say, they do have nice balloons that you can put together. Yeah. <clears throat> but it would be, you know, nice if you can if you could copy and paste like a whole paragraph of words and then put it into a word balloon, that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's every time I had that yeah, I haven't done a lot of lettering, but you have to type the whole thing out and it's like and then it's a and he has to figure out how to put it, you know, make it read good and all that. Yeah. But, uh, and when you put it in and it comes in and, you know, your 30 word balloon comes in in one line. <laughs> yeah. It's like something, something's wrong here. Yeah. <laughs> return, return. Um, I forget what Johannes uses, but uh, he's, he uses oh I don't know about lettering specifically, yeah, but he lettering. uses Manga Studio. Lettering, I think he uses something else, maybe. Uh, or I mean, you know, I'm I'm looking at his uh, his RT type, and it's like oh that's oh. really awesome. I hear that. I gotta ask him what he's doing. <laughs> Like his 3D uh, letters and stuff he's been doing. It's like, I like that a lot. <laughs> uh, uh. The two things I do have on DeviantArt are digital paintings, one of which is pretty good and the other is pretty not good. <laughs> so. So I think we 
Yeah, I think we've been going an hour or thereabouts. Um, yeah. Have we covered everything uh, you, want, you want to talk about? I, I, I think so. The Kickstarter, promote, promote the comic group. Um, you showed people your I, quick starter. Sure get... <laughs> have yeah. I assured? Um, I've no, showed no, no, it plenty no. of times. I mean, I can. I'm, I'm sorry. Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm having you on my sort of semi sort of interview show, so it's. Yeah. <laughs> it should be more about you. I think Jay interviewed You're, me on, on the last episode. I interviewed him. Your ratings are going to go through the roof when I hear you had me on. <laughs> yeah. But, I, you know, um, I hope people go and check out the, your Kickstarter that you're a part of. And, and uh, you know, it's like I said, it's, it's going to be comic as well as um, something that's, that's filmed and directed that will have actors in it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that should be very uh, interesting. A web series and um, you know, none of, none of the actors are, are big names but uh, I recognize a couple of people involved and um, yeah, I hope it's you know successful and they get it out there and you know, uh, I, I love, you know, anything to do with films or, or, or you know, uh, independent uh, shows and whatnot. Um, well, if you can spare the time to watch uh, all the the, uh, the short films he's got on his on his own website, they're really good, and they have some of the same actors, so uh, because they're just you know good actors, so. And the, probably like friends of his, like, like Woody Allen does. All his friends are in every movie he's done. Um, <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely check it out myself as well. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll get any links from you I don't have and put them in the description box below. Um, yeah, thank you uh, to people who have been watching the show live uh, for checking it out. Um, thank I'll you. I'll put this, put this episode into the playlist, and you can click on the playlist and watch the other episodes I did. The first one was with Marshall Couture, uh -huh. which was a, was a long, long, long while ago, um, but that was fun, too, and... and you know, and Jay, stand out of me, you know, I was I was doing it. And Jay Ferguson was episode two, which was more recent. Um, but I originally did a, you know, almost a, a weekly podcast at times, just an audio one. And this is sort of the, the video version of that. Um, I've been doing the hundred days, and then I got involved in uh, just. Promoting orchestras and, and the V one hundreds and uh, working on my YouTube channel, but I'll get back to my my audio show eventually and have a lot of guests on that too. Uh, but I just you know I just love talking to artists and creators and um, oh yeah doing doing you know all the people I meet online and promoting work, their work and. Uh, the great, great community. Um, so I'll always be doing this in one fashion or another. Uh, so thank you, Kevin, for being on tonight's episode. <laughs> thank you, Peter. I appreciate it. And um, all, right. all the best for our both our Kickstarters. That's right. May they both complete... Uh, we have three viewers now, of course. Um, <laughs> got one more at the end. Uh, Daniel, Daniel says nice things. Thank you, sir. Um, so, okay, thank you, everybody, and I'll talk to you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.